One of the hardest things for an artist is the quest to discover their own art style. Now even harder is for you to create something called original. It can take days, months, sometimes a lifetime is not enough for an artist to discover their own artistic voice. Whether it be on the method that you're using for painting or illustrating, the medium, or even the message, this scenario is one of the most common amongst artists at all levels. Many illustrators say that they have their own style and that they're drawing from their imagination, but clearly they have practiced just enough, and let me just say, practice perfectly just enough, so that they have a library of elements printed in their own minds, rather than having invented anything in the first place. I know this is a little bit difficult to accept, but the truth is, is that in this wide world of creators, everything comes from reference. And the things that we now find original these days are things that are coming back from the past, are resurfacing of things, things that are being transformed into new things, and things that are being recycled. So how does one artist become original these days? That's exactly what I want to help you find the answer in this video. My name's Leo and you're watching Ghost Paper, so now let's get to it. First, I would like to do an experiment with you. Open a new tab on your internet browser and head up to Pinterest and click on any illustration that you may find interesting. Immediately underneath that image, you will see hundreds of similar references to that first one. Clicking on the second image will take you to that one and expand a new series of images, related images underneath it. This never ending rabbit hole is what the Pinterest algorithm is constantly learning and improving at every moment, which is the ability to detect similar images. Now, when we're talking about similar images, we're not just talking about similar colors. It goes even deeper in a way to detect the mood, the style, and the composition of every image. This is scary and helpful at the same time. But why is this scary helpful? It is because we, as humans, are pattern searching creatures. It's somewhere in our nature the need to catalog, label, and place things in a certain category. It's how our brains are hardwired to work. So I guess that when you see something you haven't seen it before, something not in your own library of things, it makes that original to you. However, this needs to be grounded on some sort of reference that you know, so that you can see and recognize what it is. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that we are more and more, especially now with the advent of technology, forced to catalog things and compare them to similar references, just like Pinterest, thus making it even harder for us to be original. So here's the main idea for this video. The concept of originality is actually linked with transformation and changing something how it used to be in a brand new way. The easiest way to do this is to basically combine two things, mixing up techniques in order to create something new. Now, once again, if we are mixing things that already exist in this world, how are we able to create something original? Well, the truth is, is that the only piece in this equation that is truly original is yourself. You as an artist is an individual and you are only able to express in your way through your artwork. So now let me give you a couple examples. I know examples are hugely helpful, although I didn't really want to influence in your decisions your own way to try to make something striking and fresh. So first, the most simple way of combining ideas is to combine two elements. So let's start with this one. Let's take one reference that exists in the real world and mix it up with something from the illustration world. Let's take first, for example, the glow-in-the-dark portrait photography. But now let's say that we want to combine that with this black and white illustration, or something that just looks like a final piece of pencil artwork. You could say that the result is the art of Angel Ganev. You can also say that this artwork is not complex in any level of detail, but the beauty of it comes from the source of glowing, colorful light that fills up these pictures, while in contrast to the simplicity of the pencil lines. The result is quite striking and that being original or not to you doesn't take the fact that this actually does stand out in a crowd of millions of drawings. But here's another example. How about mixing up iridescence and gradients with illustration portraits? 
you get the work that's being made by Valentina Reminar. Now, do you see the pattern that I'm trying to put it here in this video? Basically, we are taking things that exist in the real world, and that is from the outside world of illustration and art. And that's why it is super, super powerful. Whenever we reference things that come from the outside bubble of art and illustration and put them back into the illustration world with your own spin into it, there is a big, big chance that you're going to create something striking and fresh. And that is eventually what we can call it original for a certain amount of viewers. We know that everything has been done before and some viewers may actually have seen that technique before from other artists who are also trying things, but at least you are trying to create a new visual and you're not just taking whatever you're just seeing online and you're trying to replicate that without adding more components, more elements to it. Now, one thing's for sure, I'm not recommending you to take any of these avenues and completely change your current style to any of these ideas. I'm simply showing you shortcuts you can take in order to get something striking and fresh at the same time. They also need to be something that you enjoy creating. That is the whole purpose. And let me say this again, without you actually enjoying this new process, there will be no continuity for your art and your audience won't be able to identify that you are an influencer in that specific art form. So now let's take this further and now mix three elements in order to compose something different. And let's also do this exercise together. So please grab a piece of paper and pencil and let's draw some sections on this piece of paper, basically three lines. Now we're going to write at the top of each section a few keywords. The first one that we're going to write is mood. We're going to think of a mood whether uh, being happy, being active, sad, or still within these pictures, these illustrations, we're going to think of a mood as the language. Next, we're going to think of a style for our line work. Does these illustrations have line work at all? Or if they do have line work, is it a thin line? Is it a textural line? Just keep writing your answers on your piece of paper. Lastly, we're going to write and think about color palette. And this one, I have to say that the more restricted, more minimal color palette, the better and the stronger the chances are for you to create something unified and striking. Again, think of the previous illustration with the glowing lights as a good example. Now, I want you to fill this questionnaire yourself because even though the combinations can be endless, I want you to go through this exercise without me, uh, once again, influencing your answers. The other thing here is that try to minimize the number of results. So maybe try to um, go, as, as you go through them, see which ones are the ones that you're more compelled to try them as an illustration and try to select the ones that are really connecting to you on a personal level. So right here, what's happening is that we are starting to let our brain compose a pattern that works for us and that's going to help us make the experience enjoyable. You should then go research image examples as you go with these options and eventually you should try them out as an illustration and you might just be surprised with the results. The last level that I want to show here in this video that I really want to get in this video is actually one of the most important as well and that is about are your illustrations actually telling a story? It could be a yes or no answer. If they're not telling a story, if they're just depicting a moment, that is totally fine. But if your illustrations are actually telling a story with, uh, with your characters being expressive, say that your characters are actually sad, they're looking at a letter, maybe that's something broken on the floor of your illustration, you can see like there's a suitcase and someone has left the scene. If you're telling a story with your illustrations, there's a huge chance that you're going to connect with the viewers on an emotional level. And that is when you can actually strike gold with your art. I do wanna share one last example here, and this one is actually personal. Actually, a couple of years ago, I was going through not, you know, a not so good patch on my life. I was dealing with some personal things. I was not creating a lot of videos. I was not drawing uh, a lot. I was just, you know, working, going home, and just trying to take care of myself. But with the little time that I had that I found myself creative, tr uh, trying to create something, I actually created a small selection of drawings, of illustrations that I made on my iPad as well. 
And those illustrations, they were actually trying to speak the feelings that I was feeling. I was trying to put my feelings onto those scenarios. And it was some sort of, you know, self-help kind of scenario where I was doing, I was creating these illustrations based on the feelings and the things that I was going through. And I do have to say up to this day, even though my art style, personally, I do think it has evolved from that moment, lining up everything that I've that I've created so far, I still look back on those illustrations with fond memories, like in terms that I've actually, I think that they are trying to say something there and the colors are minimal, the palette is actually, you know, unified. Um, I do have to say that I still find those images maybe even stronger than the rest of my work in many ways, because most of the time I'm just trying to create some happy characters. They're just going about their lives. They are just, you know, small moments on everyday life. But I do have to say that those illustrations are something that I will, I will not forget. And I know I'm biased as a creator, but I still think there's something in there that connects on an emotional level or can connect on an emotional level with the viewer. So in conclusion, remember to combine elements, especially elements from the outside world into your own world of illustration. Remember that the only piece in this equation that is original is actually yourself and how you combine these elements, it's totally up to you. And it's all about how you put together these elements. And lastly, remember to have some fun in this process. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, a like would be super appreciated as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any tips and tricks, reviews and speed paint videos and that is all for you to become a better digital illustrator. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.